I believe that they were safe in this other dimension. Right. And each time they were shooting at it, there's nothing they could do. So, but they could see the red glowing eyes. Right. Now, Kwani, when you visited Tennessee, I believe that you also visited uh, what we call on this show the uh, Secret Vortex location, and this was a area that was featured in Life magazine. We haven't revealed the actual location because we don't want pranksters coming around, you know, getting in trouble. Uh, but uh, on the, at the, one evening uh, at a gathering down there, um, we actually got a film of one of these uh, red glowing eyes, and it was just one, uh, a uh, man named Sandy Nichols, who's a, a well-known uh, abductee, had went back into the field area and uh, took his video camera, and he filmed something, and he and he claimed it was coming across the field, and it was a, a red glowing eye. He came and got me and Mark Davenport, who's a, a well-known uh, UFO researcher. You may have run oh, across I him. him. Yeah, a yeah, uh, very, very, very good guy. And we and we just kind of looked at him like uh, red glowing eye. Okay, whatever. But we went back there, and and sure enough, we get back there, and the red glowing eye is still there. And we we were filming it on video, and I actually walked up to within three or four feet of it, and it just kind of folded in on itself and disappeared. But it was clearly an eye shape, and it was red and glowing. Uh, I didn't know, you know, I had never seen any kind of phenomena like that. But whatever it was, it, it was it was really there. Yeah, well, this should be enlightening to you and others that this is a real phenomena going on. And, again, those people who poo-poo it need to do their homework and... Uh, if before they open their mouth, they should be checking everything out, reading enough, again, the areas of parapsychology and quantum physics, and, and just educate themselves, because most, a majority of the Bigfoot researchers are not educated enough. Even those with degrees are poorly educated. They, you, they're, they're studying the wrong things. I mean, there's the phenomena of uh, these giant flying birds, uh, you know, or the Thunderbirds and so forth from uh, Native American lore. Well, I mean, they're still seeing them. They're still seeing them. Gosh, you know, and they say they've got a 20-foot wingspan, uh, many of them, uh, and mainstream science is saying there's no such thing. Right. They j- just think that they saw them, or they saw a buzzard, and uh, uh, they exaggerated and, and thought they, they thought it was bigger than it was. Well, people uh, who have not experienced these things have a tendency to rationalize everything away. And they say, oh, people are are unreliable. Witnesses are are notoriously unreliable. I find that not true. That if maybe if there were uh, different people standing on each corner of an intersection and there was an accident, you'd get four different perspectives because one person would see the car at the corner of their eye, and so on and so forth, and they, they'd get a different perspective. They would maybe get contradictory information. But I'm going to tell you something. People who see a Sasquatch dematerialize in front of them, or uh, ETs materializing or dematerializing, these kinds of things, uh, they don't forget it. They remember every detail because it's the most unusual thing of their lives. So uh, where are these Thunderbirds coming from? Well, they're coming from portals from another dimension, and they can go in and out of it, just like uh, what the Sasquatch told me about Loch Ness, that they, they go in and out of portals, aquatic portals. The, the star people go in and out of extraterrestrial portals. Uh, there are terrestrial portals that the Sasquatch use. Right. and other beings uh, that go in and out of it, like the Black Panthers and stuff, that people see and then disappear. This is where they're coming from. This is where they're coming from. And I found many vortices. Uh, I'm a master dowser. I've done work for police, finding uh, criminals. I found lots of missing persons. Right, you actually solved a murder case uh, out in California, uh, and this Oregon. Was Oregon, okay. And uh, this was uh, a young girl was killed, and you actually pinpointed pointed the location, the, 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 what the man's dog looked like, and uh, where he was at and where they could go to find him, and pretty much led the police right to the guy, and they were going in a different direction. 
Yeah, they had 200 people that were suspects, but nothing solid. And uh, when I started working on the case, uh, uh, just to, seemed like a short time, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks or whatever, and all of a sudden they had him, and he was in jail. He's still in jail. Right, he's he, doing a life sentence now. So uh, I'm saying, you know, that uh, uh, the things I'm talking about are what mainstream science is ignoring uh, and what this is the real science that they, uh, I don't know why they're so neurotic about it, why they're so, uh, they, they figure they've got to have everything super solid as if the world is not made up of atoms. They right. talk about atoms, but, you know, there's other other things going on all around us that we know nothing of and we we you know people have to do their homework and one way to do it is if there's something going on in the middle of the forest that's where you need to be not criticizing others sitting in a chair somewhere at a u- university or in your home it's it's important to get out there and do the research and like i said there's a lot of fine people doing the research that uh, deserve credit and the thing is that with guns, or with the intention of exploiting the Sasquatch, they're putting that energy out there, and the Sasquatch will, will leave the area, will not allow anything to happen. Right. Right. When I had my second sighting, I had just, we'd been out there like five or six hours, and I'd pretty much given up, and I'd leaned up against a tree, and I'd, I just said out loud, well, we're not going to find the, any them at all unless they want to let us find them, you know, and that's when we had a sighting. Um now, a lot of people that report witnessing the disappearance of Sasquatch have uh, described uh, Sasquatch walking into what appeared like a blurred circle or uh, sim- something similar to like mo- the movie Field of Dreams. They just kind of like they walked into uh, another... That, that's what they're doing is walking into a portal. Right. I mean, I find portals all the time, all the time, all the time. I go into areas, uh, and the first thing I do is find out where the portal is. Why? Because that's where the Sasquatch are going to be close by. And then I telepath, and I ask permission. Some of them say, no, my mate is going to have a child soon. We don't want anybody in the area, so I don't go there. Then I find out which ones are open enough that they want to interact with me. That's what I did three weeks ago when I was in the Calmeopsis wilderness, I set this thing up with a Sasquatch here, and he telepathed to them down in Oregon. And uh, when I went down there, uh, I found out that they were three and a half miles away from where this wilderness cabin I was staying in. So I telepathed to them, and with less than an hour went by, and two of them had already come in. It wasn't even dark yet. And here this man and woman were with me. Uh, they believe in Sasquatch, but uh, they just don't know that much about it. And uh, the woman was sitting out in the, uh, the primitive picnic table they had out there, and uh, she yelled for me to come out. I was inside uh, getting my sleeping bag uh, all ready and everything, and... Uh, I went outside and I said, "What's the matter?" She says, "Geez, I just—he just talked to me. I can't believe he just—I just experienced telepathy." I says, "What did he say?" He says, "He says, well, he, all he said was, where is Kiwoni?'" <laughs> so, because uh, I just telepathed him an hour or less, forty-five minutes or so before. So I went down. She says, "He's down there." I see. I know it. I know that where he's at. And I went down a ways and leaned against a tree and talked to him. Asked them to make some noise at night so uh, the other people would know exactly that that they were there. And during the night, uh, one of them came up on the porch, unlatched the shutter of the cabin, and slammed it as hard as he could. I tell you, I did go right up off the bed, you know. Uh, It was startling, not not fear, just startling, because they were having fun. And I asked them to make some noise. So... uh, uh, Another thing that they did while I was there is they walked right through the wall and became physical once they were inside again. Right. They were physical.